Hey guys, it's Pat D72, and I uh, appreciate you taking the time to check out this video. Um, I'm going to open some baseball cards and, and show you uh, the Disney uh, stuff that I, I collect. And I um, wanted to do, and, and really what's inspired me to kind of do this video, and I've done baseball card um, ones before, but it's just to talk a little bit about the hobby. You know, I enjoy uh, Don the Auction Professor's channel because he's so intelligent the way... I, Man, if I could do a couple of videos like him on stuff that I already know and have collected and have bought and sold and have actually made money, and um, but watch the the next probably eight or nine minutes, you'll see me opening the cards, and then I'll come back again and we'll talk a, a little bit about uh, collecting and collecting baseball cards. Hey guys, it's uh, Pat D seventy two. I want to, I'm going to make a video here. It's going to be probably a couple segments where um, maybe I record it at different times, but I want to talk about one of the reasons why I had uh, started eBay. Uh, you know, part of the th something I like to do is uh, collect baseball cards, and I love opening baseball cards. I've made money selling baseball cards online. Um, I want to talk, you know, sometimes you'll get people that want to sell, you know, I, I see ads all the time about baseball cards you know for sale and people think they're worth more than a lot of times they actually are uh... so people gotta educate themselves before they uh... buy baseball cards and stuff but i want to do a couple packs of opening here on this one this is with the nineteen ninety edition upper deck <clears throat> Benito Santiago. These are such nice looking cards. I always like these. I get a lot of... I just always... I love the pictures. I mean, that's always a proud moment, I bet, to be a baseball player and have your own uh, card. Little Yankees decal. It's nice. <clears throat> Baseball card collecting is a big hobby. <clears throat> um, you know, a lot of times what they're doing now, cards are a lot more expensive to buy back then when I was a kid. Oh, wow, look at that name. Oil Can Boyd from the Boston Red Sox. What a name. I mean, obviously, that has to be a nickname. That can't be his real name. Ryan Sandberg from the Cubs. He uh, was involved with the uh, Phillies team. That's the team I like. I'm uh, from the Poconos here in Pennsylvania, so I always stick loyal to, um, you know, Philadelphia. I, li I like the Eagles. Oh, there's Wade Boggs, another... Boston Red Sox player, Bobby Anderson. Oh, there we go. There's a Phillies. So I'm pretty close to New York, too. So now I got the Phillies and New York. <clears throat> Billy Ripken. Just nice looking cards. Oh, it's. <clears throat> Okay, here's this 1989 Topps uh, baseball cards. I appreciate, you know, I, I know some people are probably like, oh man, what's Pat D's doing uh, playing with baseball cards? Um, part of my channel is, is, you know, eBay reselling, Amazon selling, and life. And the reason I started uh, eBay, uh, actually got on eBay, was... Um, to find old baseball cards that I liked, uh, you know, going back 21 years ago, because the stores really weren't, you couldn't buy, you don't, you could never buy old cards from the stores, because you're buying the current years, you know what I'm saying, um, so you never could, unless you went to a, a card hobby shop, um, 
you know, and then that that was the thing too. A lot of times I just didn't have time to go. They used to have card shows at the mall. Uh, thousands of people would actually go, um, you know, t to those shows. I actually helped a guy that I worked with one time um, do some of those shows. And um, what what you learn too, and 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 and, and I'm you know, again, I'm not, I'm doing this off the cuff. You, when you're a teenager, you know, think about that with baseball cards. You really learn something really fundamentally about reselling because let's say this card might be worth five dollars now here it is you have it in the pack you bought this pack let's say for a dollar now you're going to make a choice do i want to uh, do i like that player enough to keep that card or do i want to send it in and grade it and let's say possibly now turn it into a grade at fifteen dollar card or you know it's about buying and selling so baseball cards teach a person uh, especially kids, basically about you know business and math and and how to wheel and deal and hustle. Uh, you know, it's something that you you don't even think about when you're you know you're kind of collecting. I, you know, sometimes people are just collectors, and uh, you know they don't understand. You know that th there's money to be made in um, those items if you know how to buy them and sell them right. Okay, I had picked up at, you know, I go to Mace, I actually picked these up. These are 2019s. So I, ne I may not know many of the players because I'm not, I don't really follow it as much. I mean, I, if I see it on the news or something like that, like Bryce Harp just signed to the Phillies and stuff like that. And, you know, if my older son, who's in, more into the baseball, uh, Nathan, he talks about it and stuff. But 2019, what, I, what I'm looking for is an autograph card in here. Uh, and these are today's stars in the 1970s tops design. That's cool. Uh, these cards go for like three fifty or three ninety nine a pack. You believe it or not, if I find one of those autograph cards, that could be anywhere from a twenty to a hundred dollar card. Typically, most cards. I mean, you do have sometimes cards that are only ten dollars if they're kind of no name type uh, people. But look, look at the design. Oh, all star rookie. See, that's good because see, if that guy becomes. Uh, a major player in the future, this card will be worth money. Now, what I'll do is I'll put this in a hard protective sleeve that they use for baseball cards. But um, that's a nice, that's these are nice looking cards. Chase Anderson. There's another rookie. So I'm going to put these to the side, the rookie ones. Yankees. I love. I just love them. <clears throat> I always liked baseball a little bit more. Then football. Football is exciting to see the guy catch the ball and run and intercept and do things. But I always just felt the common man could be a baseball player. You know, in other words, everybody always gets an opportunity to show up to bat. And you know, and that's one of my mottos. Uh, you may not hit a home run every time, but at least show up to bat. You get that a lot of times in in baseball. Not everybody gets the run with the football. So I don't know if anyone understands that analogy or not, but that was always my thinking. And I always, you know, when I played baseball sometimes, you didn't have to suit up in usually special gear. You, you know, you stood there and you, you, if you could swing the bat at the ball. Where football, you kind of had a pad up. And, you know, I mean, I did, um, I didn't play sports in school, but when we played out in the yard and stuff like that, you, you know, you had to be careful because, uh, oh, wow, look at that. Flashback. Ah, oh, that's weird. That's uh, first to send. Eh, a little interesting card, though. I, love, I just love the looks of these cards, though. They're nice, sharp, bright pictures. <clears throat> now, you're guaranteed if you buy a box of these to get an autograph card in in the um, box, but I only bought four packs, so, you know, I took the risk. Uh, you know, to be honest, maybe the baseball, the pack was already, you know, taken. Oh, Bryce Harper. There he is. 
That card would probably be worth some money. Now, he, he just signed, I thought it was $330 million. I think it was 12 or 13 years to the Phillies. And, um, he I mean, the one, two, three, four, five, six. This is like his seventh year. I mean, so this is not a rookie card. Um, but this is his last card. Well, 2019. So, actually, when the two, when they released the the um, trade it set, um for the he'll be in the Philly. So this this is this will be uh, a unique card to keep, especially if you're a Bryce Harper fan. So again, I'm gonna put that in a hard plastic sleeve. And uh, this card is probably, to be honest, I, I bet you I could get probably five bucks for that card, um, just for one card. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe to be honest, maybe it's worth more. So okay, those were those. I wanted to show you something. I um was looking for some stuff I the Lonnie who who runs the garage flip channels um, he posts some cards and stuff and he, he posts a bunch of different things he sells and I had thought I went on to his what happened was I did and I clicked on his cards and it showed similar and here it was somebody else's uh, page that it took me to but I still wound up buying something from Lonnie I, 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 uh, I needed some reciprocating saw blades so I bought those but I thought he was selling these Disney cards, and um, apparently he was, but there was smaller or something like that. And but I wound up buying these by mistake from another seller, and uh, I'm a big Disney. I love Walt Disney. Um, I actually um, created a cartoon myself called Hillbilly Chicken. It's got a Facebook and everything. It's close to seven thousand uh, um, likes. I just really haven't done much with it lately, just because I was I had some health issues and business issues and. But it's always been a dream of mine to uh, develop it into something bigger and stuff. I've done a couple comics and you know things like that. So, but I want to share you. The, I mean, these these cards are beautiful. They're, you know, this is what you know. I like this is what I like to kind of collect and, and things and, and it it's not. I'll be honest. I mean, we're looking at even these couple packs of baseball cards and these. I think I paid the, these normally would have been like twenty bucks. But um, I got them for half price for ten dollars. So I mean, I have uh, about twenty two bucks into this. <laughs> excuse me this little pile so but uh i just want to show you real quick some of the cards they're they're great looking cards <clears throat> if you're a disney fan and stuff like that i kind of even feel bad if i get them out of order i guess there's no uh, certain particular order but when i have stuff i really like to take care of it i just love i mean i love i love the imagination of that how Walt Disney created these characters and then you know created the park and told stories and that's what I do uh, even with if you look at Hillbilly Chicken some of my comics I post it you know you, you you sort of write the stories for stuff that you can relate to and um, you know t tell tell some of your own stories that's what you're doing and then you hope other people like it and you know these are Disney premium uh, wonder who made these oh Skybox there it says right there. Anyone who's watching this, it greatly, it's greatly appreciated. You know, there has to be more to uh, than reselling. Part of you know what you do is collecting, and, and 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 you teach yourself about this. To be honest, because when you learn about this type of stuff, then when you're out at auctions or you're buying stuff at yard sales or flea markets, you're looking for this type of stuff that maybe you won't keep it all for yourself, but you can uh, collect and uh, resell. I am going to actually use this as my thumbnail. So this is why I'm holding this up close to the camera like that because it's such a cute picture that I'm going to do uh, use that. And maybe, you know what, maybe I'll put them both together. There we go. Uh, Bryce Harper and Minnie, Mickey and Minnie Mouse. That's what I'll do as my thumbnail. And Josh, I'll tell Josh what to do and he, we can screen capture that and that's how you do it. And then you can put some words and stuff over it and to turn uh, to an, turn it into your thumbnail. What happens is a thumbnail, in case anyone's wondering, is what people see when the video is up on YouTube, the first image that they see that kind of draws them into wanting to watch that um, particular, you know, video. So, um, I'm getting close to 500. Um, growing every week, and uh, it's been greatly, 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 greatly appreciated um, to kind of share I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about. I want, you know, I want to talk about entrepreneurship. I want to talk about health. I want to talk about eBay. Talk about reselling, and um, 
I don't know if there's duplicates or maybe maybe there, it's weird because I'm not sure. I bought all these. I'm not sure if there was a, a whole set. And no, there are some duplicates. So maybe, um, maybe I have two sets here. Who knows? <clears throat> but they are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cards. Again, thanks for uh, checking this out. Uh, the lesson from this is learning. You know, I'm, I, I've become a big fan of Don, the auction professor. Um, he is so intelligent and, and, and genuine in the, how he talks about He He's educated himself, and he's been doing it a long time to learn about other things. So part of this video is to uh, teach you guys about collecting cards and, and what, you know, you'll see, again, a lot of ads out there selling baseball cards. <clears throat> Now what I'm going to talk, and then I'll flip the camera around, I'll kind of finish going through these and then I'll flip the camera around to me, and we'll, we'll kind of, this will do, we'll, we'll touch on that subject a little bit. Don't want to, I'm going through these cards a little fast because I mean, obviously if we took 10-15 seconds to look at every card. The video might be uh, three hours, so we don't we don't want to do that. So, but, but yeah, it seems like there's probably two sets here. You know, if you go, we're we're going to Disney in January of 2020. If you go to Disney, and this is what made me think about, um, there's an animation, uh, there's a place in Epcot that shows, you know, movies, and it's funny because this Pete character, he's in one of them. You know, just the thing. I mean, this stuff was created, you know, in the 40s, in the 50s, and you know, that, that's a long time ago. I mean, uh, you know, um, I mean, I was born in 1972. I mean, that's I'm 47 years old. I mean, you start doing the math and, you know, um, you know 70, to have something so long lasting 75, 80 years later um, is terrific. I, I just, you know, look at it. Uh, it says Daisy Duck, but that's not Daisy Duck. That's Donald Duck because Daisy would have some pink on her, so... I wonder if that's a mistake because, oh, so yeah, it says Mr. Duck steps out. So Donald and Daisy are young lovers with attempts of romance. Woo. Attempts of ro little baby ducklings, I guess, coming pretty soon. So, But we'll put that away because we're going to keep this show PG. Uh, there is Donald Duck again. Donald Duck, from what I've been told, is the, actually more popular than um, Mickey Mickey Mouse. So, all right, I'm gonna flip the camera around, and then I'll be I'll be right back. Hey guys, uh, Pat D72. I'm back. I'm actually have a little space here at the kitchen. And if anyone's been following me, I'm uh, we have we have a finished basement, and it's been used for storage and and other things, and not used properly. That to be honest, you know, with doing this. And I'm going to call it a business. When you're doing Amazon and eBay and you're serious about doing it full time, it's a business. So we needed to, um, let me change my chair here. There we go. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. What, yeah, the camera, the camera's there. But um, we, need, we needed to uh, stop utilizing the kitchen and my living room too much that, you know, when we would come home from having to do things sometimes, it'd be like, oh, man, you know. You, you felt so guilty that, you know, you have to kind of, you know, clean up the kitchen and do things. So I wanted to talk, you know, here, you know, talk a little bit about collecting because, you know, if you're into eBay and, you know, reselling and, and doing things, you know, part of it is, is knowing pricing and collecting. And, and, and that's what we count on people to buy and stuff. So, I mean, I like cornies. Now, here's one of the Christmas gifts my uh, kids bought me. It's uh, Pez Mickey Mouse uh, um dispensers with candy now i think this this i think i think it was bought this past christmas um it's a little something i i think they even found i don't think they even found this in the store this year they might have actually found this on ebay let me see what the year is on this hmm I'm not sure they may, maybe they did no it's still good so they had to find this in the store it says expiration 2023 i mean i won't even open it <laughs> You know, it's something probably they paid twelve or fourteen dollars for, but um, 
you know, you don't have to, you know, for me, you don't have to go expensive to uh, keep me happy. I, I, I love stuff like that, and my, my two sons got this for me, so, uh, you know, it was greatly appreciated. And I actually I keep this on top of my dresser in my bedroom and stuff, too. Look at I, I love Disney World. It makes me a happy place. But, uh, you know, I wanted to t touch on the subject of, you know, card collecting and stuff. I, um, you know, grew up in the 80s and stuff when baseball card was collecting was uh, really popular. I mean, you you could go and buy packs of cards for 50 cents and it was nothing to find $5 cards. Um, you know, 1985 was uh, Mark McGuire's Olympic card and, and you know that that card at one time I remember watching shop at home was going for $75 you know a card and um, let me adjust the camera a little bit there we go sorry if, if it's if the screen seems a little crooked I have one of these cheap um, cheap uh, tripods and um, for, for my for my camera here so let me adjust it a little. Maybe I can adjust it a little bit, though. Let me see. Um. Yeah. You you know it it was it was I mean the eighties was was popular as far as cards. I think that was probably the peak of when they were printing millions of cards and getting people into, um, you know, you got to remember there, there really was no, I mean, eBay, I've been on since 1998. So 1985, 1986, 1997, there was no, um, you know, pe people were buying, uh, cards up thinking they were, you know, like they were buying, you know, coins or stock and they were going to sell the stuff and get rich. I see it all the time though. People will reach out to me wanting to sell, you know, cards and the, you know, they're, they're showing cards that, you know, they're saying they're $200 and they're, they're not worth 200. They're not, they're not worth $20. And it, a lot of times it, it, I, I've learned lessons. It doesn't even pay to respond to the ads or say something because they get offended. They, they, they think that, you know, Oh, you know, you find one card in there, you know, you know, what happens is cards will say, you know, there'll, there'll be an article where a card like Barry Bonds rookie card, you know, sold for $250. And then when you dig into it, well, yeah, that was a graded. Now, what's what I'm going to and this is what I'm going to tell you what graded is. Graded is a is a, a card that has been graded by a professional company such as PSA and they um, um grade the card. Like here here my favorite ball, here's a Mike Schmidt card. You'll see this sometimes on my uh photo where I talk about, you know, um, you may not hit a home run every time, but at least show up the bat, and I use a Mike Schmidt uh, photo. This card is graded. This is in a sealed case. <clears throat> you can see that, and there's like a hologram, and, and these, I guess, are like tamper resistant. They're able to, and there's a barcode. I want to, if, if you can see that barcode. There's a barcode and a number. This card normally, if this was a regular card, this card would probably go for two bucks, for example. But since it's graded, which makes it more rare, um, it, it, it's worth like $10. So that example of that $250 card, um, because it's graded. It's not like a card, like, uh, uh, you know, Honus Wagner, that maybe there's only 10 or 15 of them that make it worth $2 million, And that's why it is, you know, so rare and worth so much money. Um, a lot of times there's people that are in this sport. I, I've bought card, cards from other people on eBay that um, they'll take this card. Now, this is the Bryce Harper card that I was showing you guys. They'll take this card and actually because it's worth, let's say, let's say it's worth $5 now. You know, don't quote me, but let's just, I'm saying $5. They could send this card in, and if this gets, gets graded a 9 or a 10, um, this card could be worth $50. Um, because there's only so many of those graded. That's the point. Now, the difference in the grading system, it, it can uh, vary greatly. I sold a Joe Montana rookie card. Um, I think it was 1981 Tops, and that's a football card. Um, but I sold a, nine, a grade at 9 for $450. The 10 could go for $2,500, but 9s and 10s are very rare. Um, this is a mint 9. Now, like I said, let's say this is worth $10. If this was a 10... Now I got this myself for myself. If this was a ten, that card could be eighty dollars. So I sometimes will say to myself, you know, 
I like the card, but I don't want to spend eighty dollars. I don't like it that much to spend eighty dollars to, to get a ten. But um, you know, and these graded cards, if you look at eBay sales, there are a lot of sales that cards pretty much have been holding their value. It, graded cards, I said though, not un ungraded cards and stuff like that. Um, so you got to be don't. You know, don't go in thinking, oh, I'm going to make a million dollars selling baseball cards without doing your homework. If you, you know, ch check, d go go on eBay, and that's the best, uh, you know, even PSA.com can show you basically what the cards go for. Many cards don't go even graded unless they're really six, seven, or higher. Um, they don't even consider uh, buying the other. Now, if you have a 1952 Mickey Mantle, you could have a grade two, which is like, I think, a poor or a fair, and that card still will sell for $2,000, even in that condition, because that's exactly how rare that car is. But if you have a, uh, have a 10, that card could go for, uh, let's say, a half a million. Um, so, you know, cards could vary. You know, there's another, there's like, there now that's an 8. Now, you say, oh, what's the difference between an 8 and a 9? It's an expert at that company that is grading, that has been doing it a long time. It might be one slight a uh, flaw in the print, in the corner, the edge. I mean, they're 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 taking the time to go through these cards and um, you know grade them. And they and, and the, these companies will they do autographs. They they grade uh, other things. PSA is a big uh, publicly company. Um, I brought a couple of my Mike Schmidt cards out. You know, it's unique what you can find on there because I've never. Um, that's who I like, Mike Schmidt. Mike, I always liked Mike Schmidt because he was a home run leader and he was a, a Phillies player. And I wrote to him back when I was a teenager. And he actually, nowadays, they, they wouldn't do that uh, because they have contracts with the companies and stuff. And they know people would turn around. This this was before eBay. So he actually autographed the card and sent it back to me with a letter. I had the opportunity to uh, meet him a couple years ago at a local casino. Brought him in here in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. And uh, I actually brought that letter and uh, the card, it was I had it in a frame and, uh, you know, showed it to him. But, like, here's a Mike Schmidt card that's not graded. So if you look this up right now, this now this this is how popular baseball cards were at one time back then. That even, like, this was KB Toys. That companies were go, um, having their own card line. Like, you know, Toys R Us had a card line. Rite Aid had one. Kmart had one. Uh, McCrory's was a big, uh, a local... Uh, sort of similar to um, Walmart around here. They had one. So nowadays what cards c companies are doing, they, they realize that the hobby, you know, with, especially with um, a lot of these cards are being bought by older people like myself who are in their 40s or couldn't afford them back then. Um, unless somebody's really into, I think, you know, just recently I, I get a baseball uh, card magazine that I sub to and a guy had sold... It was like a Mickey Mantle or one of those old cards, and uh, it was a it was a professional football player that owned it. You know, I, I think they bought it for like a hundred thousand, and they sold it for half a million, like four or five years later. So, and when you look, you're able to look up on PSA how many, like for example, this graded card of Mike Schmidt. Now this is a 1982 tops. I was 10 years old when this card came out, and uh, that's not a real autograph. That's an autograph that he signed, and then they just replicated it and kept you know doing it but this card you can go and say like this is a grade eight there's probably 1500 of these out there now you know is 1500 a lot not really because uh you know when you when you consider that you know i mean there, there's 300 million people and they're and they possibly probably made three or four million of this card um but it doesn't make it as rare as a nine or a ten what they're do what the hobby is doing now is they're 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 taking pieces of the, the the jersey and putting them in packs. They're doing autographs, so they're doing a lot of things that uh, now now they have the players you know signing the cards and signing contracts. So they can't you know players can't just necessarily always be signing cards. 
for uh, fans because it's a, it's a business. And it's a business where, you know, look, Pete Rose, he makes a living off of just signing. He He's probably the one of the most people that sign ever because of being banned in baseball. He, you know, he couldn't go back and work on a team and stuff like that. So that's how he made his living. I think he, ha he's he last I heard, he lives out in Las Vegas and he does a lot of, um, like he has set hours that he does uh, autographs pictures and takes pictures and signs so he, he he makes a living off of doing that and um, you know just because a lot of people are nostalgic you know or, or they're uh, you know sort of like with Hollywood oh we gotta meet him we gotta see him and stuff so they're willing to to pay twenty five or fifty dollars to see him you know you multiply that by you know ten thousand uh, people you know in just like say two months it adds up to be a, a lot of money I think I I remember reading an agreement a couple of years ago that where the company one time had paid him like a flat fee uh, and um, like two million dollars and it was like he was guaranteed that for something like a year or two and it didn't matter how many items he autographed stuff too you know um, because you know there's autographed bats out there there's auto, you know autographed baseballs there's pictures there's the, the cards and and stuff like that so it's become a, a you know big business so well, I'm going to sign off here pretty soon. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that people that are interested in collecting uh, uh, baseball cards or actually sometimes asking the question, can you make money buying and selling uh, sports cards? Yes, you can if you do your homework. Um, don't go buying the 1987 Mark McGuire, which was his first um, Topps regular card. Because the year before, or before that, was his Olympic card, which they consider his Olympic card, the 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 rookie card, and think that oh, I bought his rookie. You got it. You got to educate yourself uh, on these things, and um, if you're going to do it out of collecting, also educate yourself because you don't want to get duped or fooled into buying a card that you think is worth two hundred dollars, and and re and react. In other words, you're buying this card. You know, someone will say, oh, Mickey Mantle, he's worth two hundred dollars. Um, he might be worth two hundred dollars if he's a great at seven, but that let's go back to that Joe Montana uh, card I talked about, where I sold a Joe Montana. I sold two of them actually uh, for a guy, and uh, they were great at nines. I sold them for four hundred and fifty dollars. Um, I sold one not great at, and I only got fifty dollars for it. So see the difference of a not great at card for fifty dollars. Some cards, if they're rough and and they're kind of beat up and they're in the last thirty years. They're not worth sending in to get graded. Um, if you're a person who's really into this or think you have a lot of old cards, let's say prior to the 60s, or the 50s and 60s are still good, even some of the 70s, you could still... Um, but if you have, if your grandfather or you know someone that has a lot of them, it might pay to actually take them, go on PSA, see how much they're worth, and you might be able to boost... The, I mean, you might, you might be sitting, let's say, on $1,000 worth of cards, but if you sent them in... And got them professionally graded, and you paid that fee. Now they charged uh, typically anywhere from ten or twenty dollars to grade a card. You know, some people say, "Oh, why would I spend twenty dollars on a card to get graded?" Because you could have a non-graded card that's let's say listed at six hundred dollars. If that card comes in graded six, seven, or even higher, now all of a sudden that card is going to be worth five times, ten times the money. Um, you know, so. There, there's a little brief, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk about that. I'm, I'm hoping that people who find this video, um, you know, that, that like collecting, like baseball, and it is a little aspect of the, the business end of it, uh, collecting. And, and this the same rules work as far as whether you're collecting other things. Um, you know, there's a lot of things out there. They always say collectible, and sometimes I you try to kind of run from that word when they say collectible because that means it's been over manufactured and it's usually not collectible some things to be honest if you're going to collect just collect for yourself because you enjoy it but don't expect to make money in it so all right hey pat d's uh like and subscribe here and i never talk about clicking on that bell but i've been i'm subscribed to uh, a bunch of people that uh, i follow and uh, you know when you click on the bell what happens is um, you get a notification on your phone or your you know desktop mo mostly on your mobile device that's when you hear the ding um, that hey you know Pat D seventy two is um, out with a new video and stuff so uh, I greatly appreciate all your support and uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions or comment I always uh, respond to them um, I greatly appreciate it have a good night.